Hey there, friends. Thanks for checking in. Smith & Wesson has been inconsistent the past four or five years. They have quality control that I think has gone downhill. And I have known people personally who bought a Smith & Wesson firearm and only had to send it back because of issues. These are issues that should not happen when leaving the factory. I had a problem with a revolver I had, an M19, that had all the makings of a great revolver, but when shooting, it completely locked up. The trigger was locked. The cylinder was locked. It, and, and customer service was nowhere to be found. So it is my estimation that Smith & Wesson needs to clean up their act. You look at the revolvers, they are so expensive. But yet they still have that Hillary hole, which by and large, people don't want. It's that internal lock, that little hole above the cylinder release. It started in 2001. Response from, to the government for some of the things they wanted. That's why it's dubbed the Hillary hole. And if I could get my hands on a 1980s Smith & Wesson 4-inch barrel stainless steel revolver with the hammer on, or the firing pin on the hammer. I would love that. I've been keeping my eye out on one of those for a while. Moving to modern times. If you recall, they produced the Smith & Wesson Sigma. It was a budget-priced handgun that a lot of people complained about. I had one. I complained about it. The trigger was super long. It made a double-action revolver feel single-action. It had all the makings of a decent handgun. 4-inch barrel, compact size, polymer frame, striker fire handgun, but it was budget priced and some people liked it. You know, you get it for like 150 bucks. We're talking 10 years ago. Smith realized that a lot of people didn't like the trigger. So their response was an SD9. Now the SD9 was also budget priced. When they came out with that, people said, you know, you could pick this up for 250 bucks, and it, it performs great, and this and that, blah, blah, blah. They said it's just as good as the M&P line. Now, at that time, the M&P was just being introduced, and they said this is just as good, but it never quite hit that status, because when the M&P line was introduced, it hit the floor running. A lot of people liked it. Some law enforcement agencies started taking uh, the M&P line over the Glocks, and it became extremely popular in the gun world. So the SD9 was sort of that, that little gun that existed, but it was off to the side. But the one that I am somewhat interested in right now is the new release of the SD9 II, which is a second generation. They made a flat trigger with the trigger tab in there. They have deeper cut serrations. It essentially looks the same with the exception of what I just talked about, the, the trigger and the slide serration. 16 round magazine and they kept it budget priced. Right around $349 is the MSRP. After it gets out and circulated and distributed and everything, it will probably drop down to right around $300. At that point, I may check out the Smith & Wesson SD2. It seems SD92. It, it seems to have taken care of the issues while remaining at a budget price. Now, the Palmer frame, compact size, 9mm handguns are a dime a dozen these days. Can we just face it? You look at what some of SAR Arms, TSUS, Canik, everybody has put out their version of a Palmer Frame Striker Fire 9mm handgun. I think in order for Smith to be somewhat successful and competitive with the SD9 II, they had to make it budget priced. And if they could get that right around the $300 mark, it could be a hot seller for them. And at that point, I will be interested in it because I have to say, I'm not interested in the uh, their 12 gauge MP12. I'm not interested in the response. I'm not interested in any more MPs. But that SD9 budget price hit that category. Working man's budget with the improvements made. If that thing works well and it doesn't leave the factory with issues, then 
I would be interested in that. I want to know what you think. Do you think that the Hillary Hole is okay? Do you think that their customer service is awesome? Do you think that they have dropped in quality control the last couple years? Are you interested in the SD92 or do you feel you're all set in that category? It's just another Power frame Wonder 9 jumping into the crowded market and it's really going to die off rather quickly. If you like videos like this, please subscribe and share. I always appreciate the thumbs up button. Thanks for watching and you guys be safe.